Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin. Today I'm going to be demonstrating a workaround for encrypted ATSC3 TV stations. What we're going to demonstrate is basically taking those stations and bringing them in to the channels app here so that we can continue watching TV in our home the way we want to. This is not going to be for the faint of heart. It's not overly complex, but it's certainly more complex than it needs to be. And this is the vision that broadcasters have for consumers rolling forward. If you want flexibility in how you watch television, what they want you doing is paying your cable provider or your streaming service provider a monthly broadcast retransmission fee to do the things that we can do right now for free with a multitude of different options. So as you watch this, yes, it's complex, but this is the vision they have for the future. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that Channels is an occasional sponsor here on the channel. I've done video tutorials for them in the past. However, they are not sponsoring this video. They did not review or approve what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Now, I've done a lot of content on Channels, and I will direct you to the video playlist in the video description. Basically, what you do here with their application is you install a DVR server on some device around your house that can be a NAS, a Raspberry Pi, a computer, and it kind of works similar to how Plex works and that you've got that server running and everything connects to that server to watch television in this case or watch recordings of TV. And so what they have that is unique amongst all these other solutions that we've looked at here is that you can add your own custom channels with an M3U playlist. So what you could do is grab something like this, which is a video encoder that takes HDMI in and then has a little server running on it that you can connect to with channels in order to watch TV or whatever else you're piping through it. Some folks actually take their security cameras and run them through something like this. Now you don't need to buy an encoder necessarily, but this is kind of the track that it takes. Now channels does not run a listening server so it has to connect to something in order to pull the video out from it. And that's why you can't just send video to channels. Channels has to pull it from something else. Hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I have gone with is an open source solution. And I found this Docker project called Restreamer. This is a, a free open source application. What it's designed to do is allow you to send a, uh, an output from OBS, for example, to multiple video streaming services. But what we're going to use it for is actually piping video from a TV tuner into channels. And the reason why I call this a workaround and not a circumvention is that all of the ATSC3 tuners that I've looked at so far that support DRM do not encrypt the HDMI. So these are certified devices who've got the approval of the broadcast industry that is not encrypting the HDMI output. So under that set of circumstances, we are in the clear legally because this falls right under the right that we have as consumers to record things from over-the-air television. If the broadcasters wanted to prevent that, they could encrypt the HDMI. They haven't done it, so that's why we're doing this. I'm not circumventing any kind of uh, encryption with another device. This is getting plugged right into a video capture card, and we're going to run Restreamer in order to get that video delivered. Now upstairs, I have Ubuntu Linux running on a little mini PC. And then connected to that PC, I have a super cheap HDMI capture dongle. And connected to that is the Zenwell TV tuner box that we've been playing with over the last couple of weeks. Now, on that mini PC, I installed Docker. And then I followed the instructions on the Restreamer uh, GitHub page here to install the Intel version of their application with Docker. It actually was one of the easier Docker containers to install. And if you have any experience with Docker, you're going to get this up and running very, very quickly. I'm not going to step through the entire setup process in this video because there are multiple ways to accomplish what we're about to do. But if you would like to see more on Restreamer or you're having trouble with it, I'm happy to do a follow-up. Now, let me show you how I have it configured. All right, so now we're on the back end of the Channels app. And currently, I have my HD Home Run Prime configured. And it also works with TV everywhere from your cable company if you have a cable subscription somewhere. So it's pretty flexible right out of the gate here. Now what I'm going to do though is add a new source, another source of channels. And instead of these two options, I'm going to select custom channels. 
And what we're going to do here is just call this uh, WVIT test, because that's the call sign of the station that I am going to connect to. I'm going to leave the stream format as HLS, but it will vary based on what you're using. And then the source, I'm going to change this over to text. So now we've got to paste in some parameters, and I have some already pre-baked here that I had gotten working earlier. And as you can see here, we have the channel ID, the channel number, I've got the name here, and then this is the uh, link to that HLS transmission coming from that Docker container running upstairs. And I will put this in the video description so you can replicate this in your own setup. There's also a learn more link here that gives you all of the parameter information so you can understand this a little better and maybe customize it more for your needs. But I'm keeping it as simple as possible here and I've been able to get this to work. A couple other things to note. You want to make sure that your channel number is coming from the M3U because I set mine to channel 1 just so I can have it at the top of my list. And then also I have it setting to uh, get logos from guide data and that'll be something we cover in a minute or two here. And then I'm going to click save. So now we have this channel added but it's still not fully baked yet. So if we go over to my Google TV device here you can see that on the guide all I've got here is just a blank entry essentially at each hour. Uh, there is one correct entry here, that's because I was working on something in a prior take and <laughs> reversed it. But for the most part, uh, you'll see something similar on your box when you put this together on your own. Now if we go in and tune the channel, it'll actually work. It'll pull in that channel, it'll be fully integrated into my channel setup here. I can record this, I can basically treat this like any other channel, even though the originating signal is an ATSC3 DRM encrypted signal. But this is not the full thing here yet because we can actually map this channel that I've created to the actual guide data and this will then behave like any other channel would. So if we go back to my list of sources here and I go over to manage lineup on the WVIT test channel we created, what we're going to see here is that right now this channel 1 is not mapped to anything. But if I hit the plus here, I can go ahead and just type in my local WVIT channel, and now the two are mapped together. Now, if you don't have this option here, what you have to do is click this plus button here and type in your zip code. So I can do a quick zip code search here and either do it based on the local over the air or my cable company and add that to the mix, and you'll see this guide data populate itself here. But now that I've got this mapped to that, and I close this, I can then go back to the Manage button here and just have it re-download the guide data. This will take a minute or two depending on what you're setting up here. But what will happen after this process is completed is that we will now have correct guide data, we will have the channel logo, and this will really now get integrated into my channel setup here, like all the other channels that I can pick up without encryption. Let's take a look. Okay, so now that we've got all that channel data updated, we've got my channel one here, and I have a working guide that has all the correct information about what shows are coming up on this station throughout the rest of the day and actually the next two weeks or so, or maybe a little bit longer than that. And then what I can do, of course, is go up here and record the news at four if I wanted to. I can do all the things that I typically do with the channel's DVR for recording and watching TV. This essentially is going to behave like any other channel, but the difference here is that this is a custom one that is pulling its video from that Docker contraption I've got set up upstairs. And the way I set it up is one way. You could do it another way. You could buy one of those encoders. You could have some other piece of software that you've got that can basically host a video in that M3U HLS format, and you're good to go. But again, it's just overly complex here for something that we've been able to do without this level of complexity for a decade now. Now this will work as long as these TV tuners don't encrypt the HDMI coming out of them. I'm not sure why they haven't turned that on given how they are encrypting everything else along the path here, but at the moment this is working because these devices do not have HDCP encryption on board. 
So that's one way to do it. I am sure a lot of you may have some ideas down in the comment section to talk about other solutions that might work as well. Channels, I think, is the only application like this that supports this kind of custom channel configuration. If there are others out there, let me know. I'd be interested in hearing about it. And what makes this one a little more difficult to set up is that Channels doesn't have a means of having video delivered to it. It has to pull it from someplace else. Otherwise, you'd be able to use OBS or something a lot simpler to get the video delivered to channels for this operation. So more to come on this, I'm sure. And until next time, this is Lon Sivan. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Budley, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Steve Green, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.